come before you uh, to give you praise, to give you thanks. Thank you, Father, once again for a Tuesday evening, for, Lord, just for you to equip us with your word, with your truth. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to be sensitive to your voice and to your Holy Spirit. And whatever nudges that we have in our hearts, teach us how to respond in obedience. Give us, O oh Lord, wisdom and understanding, revelation and knowledge. And I pray, Father, for everybody to just receive this word with gladness and joy. And I also pray, Lord, for those who will, uh, come, will join us. I pray, Father, that you may just stir up the hearts, Lord, of the ones that we have invited and that they will just join us supernaturally in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So I mentioned that what we're going to be talking about is about the forgiving others. So we're going to be talking about forgiving others. And uh, I guess right now, everybody in this room knows the importance of what forgiveness is. So we all know coming, coming from a background of, uh, you know, uh, healing and deliverance, but we know one of the main issues in, you know, one of the main hindrances of healing and deliverance is actually unforgiveness. And most of the time when we, when we minister, we, we, we don't you know, like now we're learning not to just cast out, you know, demons, not just to, you know, pray for healing like Brother Nick, he's gifted. But like if he lays his hands on somebody, they're just going to get healed. He's gifted like that. <laughs> so, so uh, but, you know, like that's good. That's all. In, that, that's, that's, that's good. People get set free. People get healed. But like what's the most important thing to do? We need to minister and deal with the heart. We need to just find out. You know, one of the first things that we find out is do you have unforgiveness? Do you have any issues of unforgiveness in the past, you know, with relationships that you have? So I know all of us here has dealt with unforgiveness in the past, but as I was thinking about this, I was looking at my life. What, what did I even, did I ever, you know, did I, did I even deal with unforgiveness in my, in my personal life? Like when I was thinking about it, parang wala masyado. Like I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, hold unforgiveness in my heart. And uh, maybe that's just unique to me. Uh, but uh, uh, I just can't remember. I just can't think of, uh, you know, a person that I held unforgiveness to. Like even my dad, you know, my mom, my siblings, you know, like I, I just can't think of anyone that I held unforgiveness to. And, uh, but, you know, maybe I'll share, I'll be sharing more about this, but right now we're going to go to Matthew 18 verse uh, 21 to 22. So it says there, then came Peter to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, how off shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times, till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. So we all know this story. We all know what this means. But it means that, uh, you know, like, uh, I guess Peter taught, you know, growing up in a Jewish background, for you to forgive three times is already exceedingly more than what is expected of you. Well, actually, that's, what, that's what's expected of the law. For you to forgive three times is enough. So when... When uh, Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? When he said seven times, it meant that this is over and beyond the law. This is over and beyond what is expected of me. And what did Jesus reply? He said, until seven times, but until seven times seven. So, sino dito magaling mag Seven, seventy, was it seven? 70 times 7 is what? 490. Magaling, magaling on math. <laughs> so, uh, you're a mathematician. So, 
Uh, I had to use my calculator for that. Anyway, you uh, you 490, like some people use this number for, you know, symbolism or, you know, it means this, it means that. Actually, what it simply means is that you're just going to forgive and forgive and forgive. You're just going to continuously forgive and you're never, you should never get tired of forgiving. So Peter thought that he was being generous by saying, you know, seven times, but Jesus said, you know, 70 times seven. So it's more, it's more than, than what you think. Like sometimes we encounter, you know, people that are unlovable and they hurt your feelings. They do something, they say something bad. And it's hard to forgive these type of people. But like, uh, if, if it's, uh, you know, like, I, I can't think of, uh, you know, an example right now, but, but just a difficult boss, a difficult boss who, who, you know, treats you like a, a rag doll. So how can you forgive uh, somebody like that? So, you know, just to share with you guys, like uh, an experience that I had, uh, Wait, let me mute this. So, I had an issue with my boss before, and, uh, you know, like he was my supervisor, and, uh, you know, like we were like two guys like there, and most of them were women. So, like, I was being humiliated. I was like, you know, like, you know, just to cut the long story short, it was a challenge for me because I really wanted to, you know, he was treating me, you know, like a, humiliating me in front of everyone and i guess this was one of the you know the biggest test you know for me in my life where you know hey man let's just go downstairs and you know finish this off diba para para ano nakakalalaki ka na eh tara doon na tayo sa baba diba para tapos na to diba yung ganun lang yung dating eh para ano para tapos na kasi man to man diba let's do it pero by god's grace you know i was learning how to not be, you know, that, that was my pride talking. It. And there was, there was, you know, something coming, coming out, bitterness, but there was anger. And this is the result of being unforgiving. Like I couldn't forgive him because he's humiliating me again and again and again and again. You know, like how will I, for, you know, I, what I would do, I would retreat to the restroom and I would, you know, pray to the Lord, Lord, give me strength. Like, like, man, it's a long story, but, you know, I realized there was a, there was a the evil spirit there. And I realized, you know, my authority in that place. And, and what happened was, uh, you know, no matter what he said, it didn't affect me anymore. It came to a point that, ano pa? Ano pa kailangan ko gawin? So, so excited like he thought for because we, we used to be in the the field we every afternoon we would be out of the office so he made me stay in the office so for me that was of course for us that was like uh, you know i know what they do they go home right away they were like after the meeting we <laughs> like like uh uh he saw me i was just happy you know like okay lang kahit di ako umuwi na maaga ngayon like, like I even started a Bible study just because of that. And, uh, uh, you know, going back to the scripture is that I learned how to forgive this guy over and over again. And I was reading Luke, I mean, this is uh, John, sorry, this is Matthew chapter 18. If we go to the verse, let's, let's go to the main verse right now before I just start talking about whatever. So let's go to Matthew 18 and uh, it's in verse 21. So after telling Peter, after telling Peter how many times you should forgive, Jesus gave a parable. So in the New King James, it talks about the parable of the unforgiving servant. So if we can read this all together, like is there any volunteers who wants to read the scripture? Maybe two verses each. 
from uh, verse 23. So that's Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. Can anybody help me read this? Because I love participation. All right, Jess, okay. I can see you. <laughs> Oh, Brother Alex, go ahead. Yeah. Two verses now. Two, two verses. Yeah, para iba-iba. 23. 23 then 24. I will, start, I will start at 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. 24. In the process, one of his debtors was, was brought in who own him millions of dollars. Next. Verse 25. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold to his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. 26. The servant therefore, therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. All right. Verse 27 and 28. Uh, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Candice? Ah, yeah, sure. Verse 27. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Verse 28. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid, uh, he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. Okay. 29 and 30. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but ran and threw him into the prison cell, though the uh, prison cell he should pay the debt. All right. 31 and 32. Last verse, yeah. Oh, sorry, it's up to 35. Anybody? Oh, yeah. 31. Yeah. 31. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. I'll finish it. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you, uh, if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Amen. So as I was reading this, uh, this you know, verses, the verses, I, I started reading it in the beginning of the chapter. And if you look at the beginning of the chapter, it said, who is the greatest? Like, I believe there's all connections, you know, like in every part of scripture and just the, just the, the, the order of how uh, Matthew wrote this down. He, you know, like in the beginning, he talked about, you know, who is the greatest? among the disciples. And then he talked about the parable of the lost sheep. And, uh, you know, uh, it also talked about offenses. And before the unforgiving servant, he talked about how to deal with a sinning brother. And if we look at this verse in verse 18, chapter 18, verse 18, but it says there, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So my take on this, especially, you know, you just move, we just moved verses after that. It says two of you agree on earth, or on earth concerning anything. They ask for, for it will be done by my father, power of agreement, where two or three are gathered together in my name. I am there in their midst. And after this comes the unforgiving servant. So what this is what what this what was this telling me? You know, whatever you bind here on earth will be loosed in heaven. So what what that means is that forgiveness, 
is one of the first things. Like if we have forgiveness, the authority that we have, and do you realize the authority that you have is not just here on earth, but also in heaven? Because Jesus Christ is now the authority. He has given you his authority, right? It's not my authority. It's not the authority of the institution or uh, anybody you know. It's the authority of Jesus Christ. So what's the authority of Jesus Christ? It's in heaven and on earth. So what Jesus is also saying here is that you have authority to forgive anyone who does harm to you. Because in heaven, all types of unforgiveness has already dissolved. You know, the word loosed is actually the word dissolved, to break, to melt. So slowly, you know, unforgiveness, Unforgiveness is actually one of the hardest things to deal with, especially if you've, if you've gone through something very difficult in your life. Like, I guess, uh, a tragedy. But like, like, like there, was, there was a pastor whose daughter got raped and, you know, for, for, for him to forgive the assailants that was really hard and that's actually supernatural that's that's already a supernatural type of forgiveness it's not normal for you to forgive somebody who raped your daughter it's not normal this is what we call supernatural like if if any type of uh you know if if for example if somebody gets murdered, you, 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 you like, uh, uh, sorry, it's a brutal because like unforgiveness. Eh. Actually, these, these are like so extreme. Na, diba? Like, it's really hard. It's hard to forgive when you're eh, extreme. Diba? Like, they killed your family. They did this. Diba? Like, a very, very difficult cases. But what about the small ones? Like, somebody wronged you, you know, like, Maybe when you were a kid and you never forgot about it. Whatever it may be, either big or small, it creates a stronghold in our hearts if it remains unforgiven. So what Jesus is saying to us is that we have to learn how to forgive. You know, right away. We have to learn how to forgive right away. It says in... Uh, before I go to the verses, it says in uh, Luke 23, 24, remember Jesus was being crucified and he said to them, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Jesus was humiliated. He was stripped down. He was nailed to the cross. Crown of thorns was on him and they were insulting him. But what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And even in Acts chapter 7, verse 60, it says, uh, you know, Stephen was being stoned. And he also said that, lay not this charge on them. And that was always their response. The response of Jesus, the response of Stephen, the response of the saints. So, now, let's go, let's go back to the parable. Uh, where am I? It's, uh, so the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. So what's happening here is that Jesus is giving a parable to the disciples and he's showing an example that this servant had a debt that was so huge which it actually looked impossible to to pay 
So imagine what this servant was doing for him to get into a debt that is impossible to pay. Like, I don't know if you look at it in current times, he must have been gambling, he must have been womanizing, drinking, but all of these, uh, you know, maybe a, a bad business deal or whatever it may be, because he, he, he had, uh, he owed the master something that was more than what he could pay. And all he could do, what did, what did the, the servant do? Because before, in order for you to settle accounts, you have to be able to, to pay it back. So what, what did this mean during the law? This meant that you had to, you know, maybe sell your wife, sell your children, sell your uh, property or whatever it may be in order for you to just settle accounts with what you owe. Or even, you know, if, you, if it wasn't enough, you had to go to jail for it or to, you have to be imprisoned for it. But what was the reaction of uh, the, the servant? He said that the servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. So this is a picture, guys. This is a picture of us. We were that servant. The master is Jesus. What did Jesus do? He went to the cross and he paid for our debt. It was not his debt. It was our debt. And he paid it in a way that he gave his life for us. He gave it in a way that he became man. You know, God became man so that what? So that he could pay the debt that we owe. And this is what Jesus did for us. Diba, binayaran niya. Binayaran niya yung mga kasalanan natin. And it was paid in full. But some people think it's not paid in full. It's like you have to do something. You have to earn it. You have to buy it. You have to, you know, you have to continue to work for it. But the debt that was paid was paid in full. And it was the blood of Jesus Christ. So now, what did the servant do? He was set free. He was free to do everything that he wanted to do. And uh, let, let's say that the servant owed here in Japan, they, they have, uh, you know, they call their, their money, uh, like if it's one mang, it equals to 10,000 yen. So let's say it's 5,000 mang. The servant, you know, uh, owed the master. So 5,000 man, and that's like maybe uh, uh, 5 million or uh, yeah, 5 million mang. Or lapad, di ba? 5,000 lapad in Tagalog. Parang ano, ano iba, yung, iba yung tawag nila dito. Lapad, 10,000 kasi. So, uh, so that, that was paid for, right? It was paid for by, by the master. So now, this, this servant finds a fellow soul servant who owed him, let's say, one man, 10,000 yen. And what did he do? He laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. But his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. But he would not. He was not merciful to the other servant. And what did he do? He brought the other servant to... Uh, where am I there? He brought the other servant to... You know, he, he, he imprisoned the servant. And uh, uh, where's that? So when his fellow servants saw what, what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? So... 
what happened here is that if you compare what the serv the first servant owed the master was such a huge debt compared to the friend that he had he couldn't he couldn't uh uh you know forgive him for a smaller debt that he had it actually uh you know resulted you know what happened here was uh he couldn't forgive the the other servant and the other servant was uh you know uh was in prison for it so i guess this is what you know what forgiveness is like unforgiveness is like is that if you have already jesus in your heart if you've already forgiven if you've already been forgiven such a huge debt then how come we can't forgive such a small debt from another i guess this is what what uh, what jesus is trying to contrast in this parable we had such a huge debt that was already paid for so when people offend us when people insult us when people humiliate us when people when when people just do do wrong things to us how come we can't forgive them like a simple matter when somebody cuts you off in the in the highway or somebody insults you right in your face or maybe somebody spits on you right in front of you like it's hirap diba hirap pag yung jeepney driver kinatad ka lang ano diba bubu sila mo kagad diba like magagalit ka eh. diba like all of us like ako before ganun eh i don't know with you guys like ako i was i was like that like i would like you know beat my heart and i would you know like uh you know just road rage you know it doesn't look like it but but i used to have road rage also not not violent road rages but you know i just go like git gita diba good gita pala gusto you know simple things like this and and like you know until how come it's so difficult right how come it's so difficult for us to forgive like na isahan ka lang like what paano ka na isahan Diba na isa ka lang sa, sa, sa pagkain, diba magagalit ka na nakalamang siya ng ano, diba like, you, like uh, you know, she, she got three slices, I got one slice of pizza, diba magagalit ka na kagad. You know, simple things, little things. But I know there, there are some here who have experienced big things, diba huge things that happen in your life. You know, like, Everything was lost. Everything was taken away. And it's so hard to forgive that person because, well, I, you know, ano eh, kinuha niya lahat. Diba? Like, I was, I was ministering to a Japanese lady here. She's so, she, she's, she, she's not that old. She's like 60 plus. Pero grabe, sobrang kulubot ng kamay niya. And, and she's a homeless. She's a homeless woman. I just saw the devil inside of her when I was ministering to her. May nagtra translate kasi she was invited in a party. And I was looking at her like, o ba chan? Di ba? Like, uh, nagtatanong ako. Like, uh, what's, what's wrong? Ever since she was ano, little, like she was young, her family was taken from her when she was uh, very young. But I see like, like, like just deformity. Her, her back is, is crooked. And I see just, I see the, the demon's eyes talking to her. Sabi ko, we need to deal with your unforgiveness. Kaya mo bang patawarin sila? No, no. Dami, dami. Di ba? Parang, ano, like she, she was saying, hindi niya kaya. But she was having the time of her life. We were celebrating uh, a birthday of... Uh, of of the one who invited her, who was ministering to her, one of the ladies here in in in, in Japan, and she couldn't let it go. Hindi daw wala na bandaw siyang ginawang masama. Wala akong ginawang masama. Di ba bakit 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 ko kailangan sila patawarin? Dapat di ba like I don't know what she's looking for. 
Pero what happened all throughout that years? Ang lakas ng stronghold niya. Yung stronghold niya sobrang, sobrang fortified na. Like hindi na ma-penetrate. Nakikita ko sa eyes niya, hindi kaya. But you know what? She started to melt. You know, she, 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 she felt loved. You know, before she left, I don't know where she was going. She was going to go, you know, around, I guess, homeless. She, she called us, Paulette, just to say thank you. Because I felt the love. I felt, I felt joy. Praise God. But she's still roaming around the streets of Adachiku. Homeless. With that bitterness. With that hatred. With, that, with those evil spirits oppressing her. You know, like if you saw her hands, it's, it's like... You know, it's winter, right? It's winter time, you know, recently. And you, you see the, 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 just the, the deformity. And this is, you know, maybe an extreme form of unforgiveness. Hindi niya kaya bitawan eh. But there might be some, some of us that we have little, little unforgiveness. Like, you know, those little things that we can't seem to let go. But like, <laughs> like what little things like little things like sa akin, one of my pet peeves before was the toothpaste the about toothpaste if you don't squeeze it under like 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 Kim would always squeeze it in the middle like I would the, oh, <laughs> like, uh, I would say <laughs> please come on like it's just you just have to do it under I, I mean I already dealt with that with my brother I, I, I think do guys really squeeze from the bottom more I want to like get it all. Man. <laughs> I, want, I want to get it all. But but I already dealt with that with my brother, pala. So so pag nating kay Kim, like uh, you know, she would do that. I would just tell her. Wala namang unforgiveness, pero you know, what I, mean? I understood already. Pero like there are some, kasi like little things like that, hindi natin kaya bitawan, di ba? Like kunyari, maunahan ka lang sa banyo, or like you 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 forgot to put the toilet seat up. Diba like like little things like this. Parang ang laki ka agad. Diba like we, we can't let that happen. Especially if we're born again believers because the moment, especially to married couples. Married couples like, man, I, I, I realize this little things. You know, we, 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 we argue with little things before. And, I, and, and if that little thing you know, becomes a tomorrow. You know, you don't settle it tomorrow. And the next day, you know what happens? Man, the enemy starts oppressing me. I feel him just lurking right around the corner. He's right there. Bastards, man. They're right there. They're bastards. The moment you make a mistake, they have the right to oppress you. Lalo na tayo, guys. We're born again believers. We're walking in power and authority and little things, especially sa mag-asawa. If we let little things go, no, oh, we can't afford it. Like I realize if kahit hindi ako mali, you know, like, I realize, hindi pwede. Like, hindi, hindi pwede. Kailangan, kailangan siya naman mag-sorry. Kailangan siya naman mag-apologize. Pero I realize hindi pwede. I gotta, I, I know more eh. I know better, so I have to approach her and sorry for doing this, but <laughs> my but <laughs> so you know I'm I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning to, to just get, get rid of my excuses, even if it's not my fault. You know, sorry for whatever it is that I, I'm sorry for. If I, if if you know, like it, it's the pride. We gotta get rid of pride and Start addressing these little things. Because how will you address the, the big things if you can't address the little things? But now look at this, guys. Look at, look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. 
verse uh, wait look. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. So it says here, Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So what's, what's, what are we talking about here? Is this water baptism, Holy Spirit baptism? Actually, it's talking about just you receiving Jesus Christ into your life and because jesus christ died it means that you were also baptized into his death but sometimes we still resurrect what's already dead sometimes we resurrect the old man it's still you know like I want to live in the flesh i want to live in this i want to live in that but if you look at what Jesus Christ paid for. Yung sa tingin mo na sobrang laki. Like, I don't know what it is. It might be like Obachan. Di ba? Who, who was, everything was taken from her. Her entire family. Siguro she's from the province. And very traditional Japanese. Like, they used to do that though. And then they disown you. They, they send you away. I don't know what she did or if she didn't even do anything. Pero sa kanya, it's, it's, it's big. It's that big. Hindi niya kaya. Wala siyang ginawang mali. Di ba? Wala akong ginawang mali. So, if you see it that big or you see it that small, we have to see what death we had this, the death of sin. You know, because of sin, we're, we were destined for hell, for eternal damnation. We were destined to suffer all throughout eternity. And that was the debt that we had, which was paid for by Jesus Christ. So kung makita lang ni Obachan na ganun kalaki yung, like, like kailangan mo lang natin makita, like, what were you forgiven of? Di ba lang, nakikita mo ba yung kasalanan? Misa kasi, you, you won't see it. Eh. Like, no, I'm good. Wala naman akong binabasama. Di ba, wala naman akong sinasaktan. Di ba, I, 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 I've grown up in a good family. I've uh, been raised right. I did you know, I don't do anything wrong. I, I, I live, uh, you know, uh, I'm an honor student. I, uh, I obey my parents. I have a, a husband and, you know, or a, or a wife. I have children. Everything is fine. Everything is perfect. But do we see what that sin is? Do we see how heavy that sin is in the eyes of God. Di ba kay God nga, there's no bigger or smaller sin. But it was forgiven. You know what? Jesus did not just forgive us of our sin, but He also gave us so much more. Di ba? In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, let me just read that for you guys. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Well, let me read from uh, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power and if you go on and on it talks about what jesus 
has given us. He did not just pay for your debt, for our debt, for the debt of the entire world. Yung, yung, yung uh, kasalanan ng sanlibutan. Binayaran niya lahat. Not just the present, not just for us, but even the past and even the future. After a hundred years from now, even that debt was already paid for. And not just that, He has given us. Like we have to understand, like, ano ba yung debt na yan? Di ba? Ano ba yung, ano ba yung utang ko? Ano ba yung, na, 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 ano, ano ba yung utang ko kay God? Di ba? You are an enemy. You were an enemy to God because of sin. You were once upon a time a child of Satan. But the moment, who is the God of this world? Because once upon a time when we were sinners, we were part of this world. And who is the God of this world? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. That's, that's Satan. But Jesus came that we may destroy the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. That Jesus came that he might give us the riches of his inheritance with the saints. We have to see what was paid for. What the, yung utang natin, kailangan muna natin makita yung utang. And then, ano yung binibigay niya? The love that He is giving us. The love na sobrang mahal ka niya that He wants to forgive you. That He has already forgiven you. He has already forgiven you of everything. That even your past, your present, and even your future sins, no matter what it is, even though you don't have plans to commit adultery tomorrow, even that was already paid for. But what's going to happen? Your church group is going to condemn you. People around you are going to condemn you. You're going to condemn yourself. You know what I mean? My, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that, what, what's the point? Is that even that has been forgiven. But if you realize that you're not going to go there anymore, you're not going to want to commit sin anymore because if you know how much was paid for on the cross, hindi ka na babalik eh. You're going to want to know your inheritance in the saints. So ganito kalaki yung binayaran ni Jesus para sa atin. Diba? At meron pang bonus. Pinatawad ka na. Meron pang bonus. Plus, 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 plus. Diba? Like, that's like an unlimited plus. And siguro if there's one thing that we can focus on, you love niya para sa'yo. Diba? Yung pag-ibig ng Diyos para sa'yo. Ganito ka niya makamahal na parang kahit ano pa gawin mo, paulit-ulit. Diba? If you continue in sin, it doesn't matter. He still loves you. But first, deal with your unforgiveness. You have to forgive yourself for committing that adultery. You have to commit yourself for committing that sin. You have to co forgive yourself for committing whatever it may be. If you lied during grade 4 class to your teacher, and if that's still haunting you until today, if you stole a Mongol pencil during prep, if that's still haunting you, then remember you have already been forgiven. It is already done. So all you have to do is to receive His forgiveness. Pero ito na, binaltrato ka ng boss mo. Binaltrato ka ng mga pamilya mo. Hindi ko kaya patawarin, Lord. Masyadong ano, masakit. Masyadong, masyadong masakit. Kinuha yung inheritance ko. It doesn't matter anymore. You have an inheritance with the Lord Jesus Christ. His inheritance for you is exceedingly, abundantly more than what you could dream, think, or even imagine according to the power that is working inside of you. So whatever, if they take everything, it doesn't matter anymore. 
if you are a real born again believer kundi na din lahat bibigay ko pa basta sa akin lang si Jesus Do you remember the story of that man who found a treasure in a field when he found that treasure on the field ano ginawa niya tinago niya ulit he sold everything that he had and he bought that field guess what who's the treasure you're the treasure jesus has seen you as his treasure and now he came down to buy you back buy you back so that you can be his again so ano ngayon is kung ano ginawa sa yo malaki man o maliit It doesn't matter. You're forgiven. Sa'yo na yan, akin yung treasure nito. Whatever treasure I have in Jesus Christ, because He sees me as His treasure, I see Him as the only treasure that I need. So for me to forgive, you know, over and over and over and over again, it's okay. I'll forgive them. You know, like, I'll forgive them no matter what. They were like, kung, you know, like, kung hindi ako pansinin, okay lang. You're forgiven. You're, you're forgiven, di ba? Like, I still love you, but you know, like, if it's gonna be like that, then, hey, I'll stay here, you stay there. Di ba? Like, I forgive you, wala akong, wala akong ano, wala akong heart issue. It's okay for me. You're forgiven. I love you. Diba? Pero if, if, if that's the way we look at things, then we gotta, you know, like, stay, stay, stay away from that person. Diba? What, whoever that is, like, if it's a loved one, it's okay. Kailangan muna natin i-deal yung sa atin. If that person can't deal with, with their heart issue, it's not your responsibility anymore. That person has to find it in their hearts to forgive And no matter how many times a person, you know, does wrong to us, we forgive. And I was just reading, a, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, 18, sorry, Matthew chapter 18. Because there's a passage here about, you know, like if somebody has wronged you, that's why I mentioned that earlier. So, uh And but like in the church, if a brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So uh, it also says, you know, here also, I think the previous verses, is that if they come to you and they repent, But then forgive, restore, relationship, okay. If they do it seven times and they come back seven times, they repent, then restore that relationship. Pero pag walang repentance yung tao, tapos ikaw na forgive mo na siya, pero yung person that you want to restore a relationship with has not yet you know, repented, wala tayo magagawa doon. Di ba? We won't be able to, to restore that relationship until that person repents. So our duty is to ourselves. Kasi with others, hindi na natin hawak yung decision nila. Di ba? They have a choice. They have a choice to make and that choice is not yours. That choice is, is not mine. It's theirs. But you know, when, when they're there, we, we talk. We talk. We, 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 we speak. But like, we, we love. So, I guess that's, that's one way for us to look at, you know, forgiving others. Because if we can't see how much we've been forgiven, it's going to be hard for us to forgive others. And sabi nga ng iba, it's impossible. Diba? And, and if, if we're really honest, 
it's one of the most difficult things for us to do. Diba? Especially siguro if you're a new Christian. Pero like now, like, you know, if, 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 you've been, if you know that you've been born again, it's easy. It is, you're forgiven. You know, no problem. Diba? No, hindi mo nga kailangan mag-sorry. Like, pag, pag uh, somebody did something wrong to you, you're forgiven. Inside, like, I, don't, I won't take that. You know, it, it's okay. I'm born again. If I'm born again, that won't hurt me. Because I've already forgiven you. That's the attitude. We have to have an attitude like, boom, quick to forgive. If somebody cuts you off, hey, by all means, take your time. Puluhin mo pa yung jeep mo. Okay lang. Sige. Bar- Mr. Barter. Sige, barter ka pa dyan. Puluhin mo, lang, puluhin mo pa lang tao yung jeep. Sige. Okay lang. Like, Patience. You develop patience. Hindi ka na naaagrabyado. Di ba kasi sino ba, na, sino ba yung, yung uh, naaagrabyado kapag merong unforgiveness? Hindi mo alam yung tao. Wala sa kanya. Hindi niya alam na you know, she did something wrong or he did something wrong. They're clueless. Pero you got hurt. And you keep that hurt. You know, they don't know any better. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Diba like, they don't know eh. Diba like, you know. You be quick to forgive. Kahit 500 times in a day. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if it happens over and over again, wala nang wisdom yun. Diba like, if you get abused 500 times a day, like, diba, we need wisdom. Ah, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. Yeah, I was reading that earlier pala. It was there, the, the you know, going seven times. So, so, I guess, you know, like we live in a wicked world, diba? This world is wicked and we could easily get offended by the news, by, by uh, you know, what's happening, diba? Like, like I, 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 I saw that... Uh, what do you call it? The, the barrier. It's a motorcycle. I used to ride a motorcycle. Uh, and uh, siguro going, going to just an example, final example, is that, you know, I, I was led to, to share this uh, even before uh, Brother Ron, you know, shared. Uh, w- with regard to motorcycles, like, uh, naalala ko yung barrier, di ba? That's, that's so stupid. You're going to put a barrier in the middle of the of the the second passenger. But talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, unforgiveness. Like, I never had issues of unforgiveness in my life. Eh. But as I was thinking about it, I remember maybe people having issues of unforgiveness in my life. And I share this to you guys because this is part of my testimony that just to, just to you know, try to summarize it without any much of the details... Uh, you know, I got into an accident riding my motorcycle. And, uh, you know, like, uh, just to cut the long story short is that, you know, I, I injured a man. And, uh, you know, at that uh, date, at that day, you know, uh, at the end of the day, that man actually died. And, you know, like, we, we were, you know, uh, we, we, we had... Uh, uh, a good talk with with with, with the with the but anyway just to cut the long story short was that I, I got into a case for three years for three years like for a reckless homicide uh, resulting to imprudence and uh, the family you know the family the the daughter you know like uh, they got they got they got mad you know they got mad at me but I was there I was helping out uh, uh, you know like I was, I was living my life. I was already a Christian during that time. But I would ride my motorcycle like there's no tomorrow. I was already, I already had a child, but I had a Raider 150cc. And I would ride it, you know, max. I love, I love speed. And I would, you know, like I didn't care. I was a Christian already. And I was like in my mind, Lord, you can take me anytime. I'm ready to go. I was, I was like that, but I had attitude go like, 
hey, you know, I'm ready to go. Lord, you know, para ganon in my mind, the way I drive. And uh, that happened. So my, 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 my theology was still saying, why? <laughs> Lord, why did you allow this to happen? <laughs> Lord, why? Like, you could have taken me. You could have taken me. Why did you take somebody else? They were like, I was ready to go. Like, you, you make me responsible for another person's life. They were like, Tata Ignacio. And he was 67 years old. And it was the day before Nazareno. Kasi mahilig daw siya mag Nazareno. And the day before he died, I told his family na, nasa totoong Nazareno na po siya. Di ba? Kasama na po niya si Jesus. But we had a good relationship. But you know, my mga mga yung umepal, di ba, na mga family members na you know they they wanted this, they wanted that. So it came, it became three years. I was in a case for three years, and they had issues of unforgiveness for me. Di ba? I, ako, I I I forgave myself. You know, like I I I I learned. You know, I I don't. You know, like what I said, I don't really. Uh, hold unforgiveness but you know in that three years you the the case was settled and uh that person she she tests she also became a born-again christian and she you know she wholeheartedly uh you know forgave me Yung mga pamilya nila, after three years, wala na sila. They're nowhere to be found. They're not there anymore. You know what I mean? Like, she was, she was like in the, the point of 50-50 na yung buhay niya. Sabi ko, Tess, you need to settle already with what I have. Kasi pagka, if I presented my case, baka you could get less pa. Parang ganun. Basta naging ganun eh. Gusto ko si lumaban, di ba, prosecutor and stuff like that. Anyway, what happened was that, you know, when we ended, you know, when we settled, everything was done for. We prayed together. And, you know, joy was in our hearts. Na kaya pala nangyari to. Di ba? Kaya pala nangyari to is that for you to be born again. Di ba? Like, it wasn't God who allowed it. Pero although my theology at that time was telling me, you know, but pero I knew it wasn't God's fault. It was my fault. You know what? Two months after, may nasagasaan na naman ako. Crazy, man. Pero buti na lang yung tao na to. May ano, mga chinelas na, sa, na sakay. I was rushing from a Bible study all the way to Paranaque, from Eastwood to Paranaque because my dad fell down from a, from a, a bathroom. So he needed him. So I was like rushing again. You know, I had to like speed the level. I was going 75 kilometers. Tinamahan ko yung tao na to. Sabi ko, lipad ako sa, sa bike, di ba? Uh oh, here we go again. Bang! <laughs> What's And she fell on a ditch filled with, with the soil. And there was no injury, but I already knew how to settle by then. And I don't know what was happening, but the, definitely wasn't God. It was the enemy wanting harm, but I, I knew that an angel was there to protect that lady because I was going 75 kilometers. An hour and walang scratch sa kanya. Sabi ko na lang yari ni. Like, I thought, here we go. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like pero like after, after that case, three years after, like, she received her forgiveness. She, she forgave me of whatever wrong that I've done and I saw in her face that, you know, parang she was maaliwalas, di ba? Like, she was glowing. So, I share that story because we all have stories of unforgiveness in our lives. Like, I was the one who caused unforgiveness. But I don't hold unforgiveness, you know, in, for, you know, from what I know. I don't hold unforgiveness. For some reason, I don't. I don't know why. That's just me, siguro. Like, among my brothers and sisters. And, pero ako naging result. That's that, that, that I, I hurt a lot of people. You know, there, there are a lot of other stories that, you know, I've, I've hurt a lot of people. You know, like, sometimes willingly, sometimes unwillingly. But, like, but 
That's the story I share to you guys because we all have our stories. Or if not, if you're going through that, unforgiveness right now, whatever it is, if it's big or small, let go and receive the forgiveness of the Lord because Jesus Christ has forgiven you with such a great debt. And he says that you are forgiven of your past, your present, and your future sins. Everything has already been forgiven. All you need to do is repent and receive his forgiveness. Jesus said to the, the, the woman, right? Does anyone condemn you? And he, she said, no one, Lord. Then go and sin no more. That's what we need to do. Like, if you have received the forgiveness of God, you don't want to go back there anymore. But like, you don't want to keep unforgiveness in your heart. You know, spaghetti lang naman yung kinuha sa'yo. Diba? Or chicken joy. Diba? Okay lang yan. Diba? Pag bitawan mo yan. Whatever it may be, let it go. If it's big, then forgive and receive His forgiveness for you. So I just release right now the forgiveness of the Lord over you. I just release the truth that you are forgiven of everything. Your debt has been wiped away clean. The past, the present, and the future. You are now cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I release peace in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's what I have for you guys tonight. And uh, uh, Brother Nick, you want to share something? Uh, more like if there are any other questions. Uh, forgiveness plays a big role, obviously. Uh, if you haven't been listening to what Setra was uh, sharing a while ago. Uh, one of my favorite verses or at least, you know, the, the one that I constantly use is Luke 4, 18. Spirit of the Lord came upon me, anointed me, bring good news, poor, sent me to proclaim captives to be released. Think about that. When you harbor unforgiveness, if you keep it within you, if you harbor hate, you're in bondage. It's, it's not much the other party. You, you've heard this before. You're letting another person stay in your head or your heart rent-free. I don't know if you guys know real estate. Man. If a person resides inside you rent-free, causing you to, I don't know, like just boiling inside hate, anger brewing inside you. Is it really worth it? Proclaiming liberty to the captives, recording, uh, recording the side of the... To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Do you actually think that by not forgiving another party that you yourself aren't oppressed? Right? Uh, the other one is uh, in First John, First John one verse eight to ten. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to what? To forgive us our sins. Now listen, the forgiveness aspect is such a huge thing in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God. What Jesus actually did for us was what? Forgive. 
That's what he did, right? Now, from that forgiveness, what did we get? We are cleansed. More importantly, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what do we gain from that? If unrighteousness was removed, the byproduct obviously is righteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Uh, okay, I don't need to share this one. Boils down to... Walk by the Spirit. I'll still go there. That's why when, when, we, when we started this group, I, as much as I hate calling it steps, we build on the foundation. You'll, know, you don't, you'll notice kung gaano ka-importante yung inumpisa natin. The what is eternal life, your identity in Christ, your spirit, soul, and your body. Therefore, when I say something like walk in the spirit, you are not going to flesh. You are not going to muscle up. You are not going to like attempt in your flesh to produce these fruits. The fruits are just a byproduct of who you're supposed to be, who you already are in Christ. You don't have to do anything apart from abiding in Him. Diba? All we have to do is just abide. Uh, walk by the Spirit is in Galatians 5.16. If you go to Galatians 5.16, you read through the entire, I think, till the end of 16. Then you will, you will pretty much see and view what type of a, a picture a person that walks by the Spirit is supposed to be. And I don't mean that in a, because in most cases, this is how it's being taught in church. And the reason why I say that is because that's how I handled it before. Parang, oy, may kulang ako nito. Yeah, okay, I'm doing this, that, that. Like, for instance, okay. Uh, I'll read through it. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The, easy to understand. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. Against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Like forgiving people. It's opposing anything that opposes righteousness. You are merely operating in the flesh. If you have lust, you are operating in the flesh. If you have anger issues, you're operating in the flesh. It's still there. It's that metanoia moment, that Romans 12, 2 thing, that thing that you need to do. It's that James 4, 7 that you need to resist. Okay? Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Flesh, huh? sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, and strife. Strife. That's the, that's the unforgiveness part. Jealousy. Guess what? That's also part of that. Tama, brother Secho? Diba? Hindi ka makano, seselos ka, and then you can't forgive kasi feeling mo nilamangan ka, kaya siya nag-umabot dun. Fits of anger is also within that family bracket, what you call it. Rivalries is also there. Dissensions, divisions, envy. Okay, drunkenness, unless kung naglalasing ka kasi banas ka. <laughs> Orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Dati parang iniisa-isa mo pa yan. Hmm, wala yata ako nito. Ah, yan, wala ako yan. Maybe what should I do in this and that? You just have to do one thing. Walk by the Spirit. Remember who you are, who paid for you, who resides in you, period. And live that way. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh 
with its passions and desires. If we live by spirit, let us also keep in step with the spirit. It's a daily thing. It's not much a, no, yeah, we, we, we've used this as, a, as an example several times. Uh, yung parang, oh, did you do your quiet time? Did you meditate? So, ibig mo sabihin, you're only as good as if the pages of your Bible are open and it's in front of you. Or kailangan mong bumuelo ng ganyan na parang, okay, I gotta start my day and this and that. Nako, kung ganyan yun, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to confess this. I read at night. <laughs> Paano ako ngayon? You know, like the rest of the day, uh, do I have fits of anger? I don't. I don't have to struggle with that. Now, in fact, the reason why I, I threw this subject to Setro, I'm like, okay, I can't relate to this, this uh, topic. I don't... Sabi ni Kat, I don't harbor hate though because I get even. <laughs> no, I'm <just> kidding. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get take on. I don't... You know, I, I, I say this a lot. In, in groups that, that I, I form or I start, I establish, like you guys can, can say anything and, you know, huge, huge chance, I really don't get offended. But if I do answer back, tapos na pikon ka, try to stop me as well because I'm not just, I, I just carry myself this way. Um, anywho, so we just don't want to allow the enemy to create their strongholds in your life. And, and we know that, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a do not, uh, in your anger, do not sin, do not leave the, the enemy a foot foothold. Yeah, it starts with a foothold and then you will have verses that, that state that you can destroy strongholds. It's, it's, it's that broad, that big of a room for the enemy to grow in your life. Uh, it's not much of a go-to, but unforgiveness in the spiritual realm. I don't know if I'm if if it's safe to assume or say this. Manifest in a bad way to your body. I mean that in the picture the more extreme terminal illnesses that a person can possibly have, it kind of does that. So, you know, it's not a go-to. It's not, parang kunyari kung sasabihin mo na ganyan, oh, bakit yung mga infant merong ganto merong ganyan? It's hard. Uh, bakit ka naka-private sa akin? And he's actually here. Oh, Ron, you want to say that? I'm surprised. Like, <laughs> Unforgiveness, madalas cause ng cancer, sabi niya. Uh, well, he said it already. I was gonna say that. I just wasn't comfortable saying it out loud. But yeah, but how do you say that to a kid, right? Or an infant? Parang, oh, may unforgiveness yan. Parang wala pang malay, ganun. So it's not really a go-to, go-to. But, you know, I'm quite sure uh, the likes of Ron have, have ministered to a bunch of people. I've said this name a few times, uh, my uh, coach, Jentan, would say that as well. I, I personally have had a word of knowledge uh, from the Holy Spirit while ministering to a person who didn't seem like she had any problems with unforgiveness. Like, sobrang mild-mannered naman niya, ganyan, ganyan, and then, boom. You know, it was something that she was hiding. Um, so that's what I have. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. Well, I just wanted to add there, you know, to leave you guys uh, uh, just a, a better understanding of, uh, you know, the difference between the old and the new. You know, read the book of Romans. Grab it. Like the, the book of Romans, you know, it's, it's the masterpiece of Paul. Eh? And I just want to read to you uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 20. It's in the New King James. It says, Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound. So who are the offended guys? Mga lawyers. <laughs> no, I mean, those who, who stay on the law. Like remember when you were in the law? You get offended easily. Like I would get offended easily. You know, like 
like little things, little things. And, and that's what happens. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So the law was there, what, to? So that offense might abound. But like sin might abound. And what's happening now? <laughs> Everybody's offended. If I tell you that that I'm black and you know six six foot you know seven, looks like Scotty Pippen, and uh, you tell me I'm not I'm not I'm not this. You, okay, good for you. But <laughs> like it can be a cause for me to be offended if I tell you I'm Scotty Pippen, And then you're gonna agree with me that I'm Scotty Pippen. I used to think, I used to, you know, think that I was Scotty Pippen before, you know, during the Bulls era. But like, that's the, that's the thing. Like, people don't want to offend anyone, right? We're so sensitive with our words, with our actions, and you're so conscious that you might offend someone, especially yung mga Kristiyano. Baka ma-offend sila. Like, you know, we're, we're so careful to keep a smile all the time, to, to make sure, you know, like, yeah, I'll pray for you, brother. I'll pray for you, sister. It's okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? You show face because you don't want to offend anyone. What's that saying? You're still in the law. But grace has come so that, so that a sin reigned in death even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Christ Jesus. So we are no longer slaves to sin. Hindi na tayo, ano, you know, I, I don't mean to offend anyone, okay, guys? I'm just speaking this verse out. You know, I'm just speaking this verse out because this is the book of Romans. Like, before we used to be slaves to sin under the law. But under the age of grace, guess what you're a slave to now? You can't help but do what's right. You can't help but think what's right. You can't help but speak what's right. Because we are already slaves to doing what is right. Not because we will earn something, not because you know you want to show face, not because of this, but because of the debt that was paid. But you are forgiven. That is our identity now. And we are now slaves, you know, to, to forgiveness. To put it in another way, we we, we forgive, keep forgiving. You know, let, let, do not, you know, pag, pag, uh, yan, pag offense, pwedeng maging torn. It can put a torn in the ground. Right? Only one out of four bore fruit, according to the parable of the sower. So with a torn, what happens? Parang na, ano, like, God, you know, you, you start to voice your concerns to God. Why is this person in my life? They were torn in the flesh now. Eh? They were torn, Paul's torn in the flesh. So you allowed it to happen. You know, I got a torn in my side. Like, I don't know what to do with it. No, that's not from God. Remove that torn and forgive and cultivate a good heart with the relationship with God. Actually, you're, you know, you're not going to cultivate a good heart. God will do it. All we need to do it's just focus on God. Focus on Jesus. Read the word. You know, we, we bear fruit. God will cultivate your heart. You know, according to John chapter 15, verse 1, God is the husband man. And yeah, I just wanted to share that, you know, Romans verse because that's who we are. We're slaves to righteousness. So let go of that slaveness to unforgiveness because... It's just gonna, it's just gonna put thorns, put stones in our hearts. So, 
we we finish early, brother Ron. So if you got any insights uh, about unforgiveness, you know. Simple on the man, you know, just to add, I'm sure you guys covered a lot of ground already. Pero yung unforgiveness, um, kaya sobrang open door siya. It's, it's, I mean, the very basic and the very essence of the gospel, the very core of it, lies in forgiveness. I mean, kung yun hindi mo matanggap, ano, wala ka lang ibang matatanggap sa gospel. Wala ka lang matatanggap sa salvation. Kung yung forgiveness mismo, hindi mo makuha, hindi mo maget, hindi mo maano yung grace, I, I, I don't see how you can receive anything else from the gospel. You know, and that's why kanina nga, when I, I messaged Nick, you know, um, Sabi ko nga na, like, I minister to a lot of people and I don't have a Bible verse for it but you know it's an experience lang, but I mean feel free to disagree I'm not saying it's gospel truth but just from my personal experience just an insight I want to share majority ng na, na minister na namin na may cancer or may severe terminal illness ang root normally is unforgiveness and it's not just unforgiveness na to others kasi yun yung turo ng church eh. Ba yung 70 times 7, forgive mo to, forgive mo yan. Then, 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 pause muna. Have you forgiven yourself? Diba? Minsan may unforgiveness kasi sa sarili mo. Ito pa isa. Have you forgiven God? Lalo na paggaling ka sa mga doktor, God allows, God allows. Can, you know, they, they, they think parang wala, agree to disagree. No, man, that's poison. Laso niyan. You know, and I've seen well-meaning Christians who love Jesus, but they're demonized. Why? Kasi may unforgiveness kay God. And, kaya na lang, wala lang. Y- yan yun. Yung kaya mo umiti na God meant this for good, pero deep down in your heart, galit ka. You know? Huwag tayong plastic. Have we forgiven ourselves? Have we forgiven God? Kasi if not, root of bitterness yan. And where the root, there's a root of bitterness, there is every evil thing. Diba? Yung, yung sinasabi nyo na being offended or offense, Diba nga sabi nga ni Jesus, Luke 7, 23, Blessed are those who do not take offense at me. Diba? Who are not offended in me. Eh, ang daming na-offend kay Jesus, ibang klase. Pero hindi sila na-offend dahil bastos si Jesus. Na-offend sila dahil truth yun. So, kung, you know, ako, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys, I may have offended some of you in the past. You know what I mean? Pero, <laughs> you know, I, I don't have any, I, wala akong magagawa na, ano, it's, Pero tignan natin, saan ba na offend Sa personality ko? Sa flesh ko? Or sa message na bit-bit ko? Diba? You know what I mean? So, kasi ako, as much as, as, as far as I, I can, ano, as far as I am conscious or, ano, uh, well, it's an, kung anong ang control ko, I, I don't wanna, I don't mean to offend anyone. But, um, now you guys know how, how, how strongly I speak against dead religion because it kills people. So, I-check natin kung offended tayo. Offended ba tayo sa tao? O offended tayo sa message ng tao? Diba? Are we yelling crucify him in our hearts? For what reason? Because that reveals something na sa atin yung problem. Kadalasan yung offense is just, it's, you know, we are projecting our own anger and unforgiveness towards other people. Na may asar tayo kay God. May asar tayo kay God. May asar tayo sa Christianity. Tapos when somebody speak something na hindi, hindi ganito yung ganyan, napoproject sa kanya yung asar, yung galit, yung offense. Bakit? Kasi hindi ma-reconcile. You know? Yung mga hindi, sabihin ko yan eh, um, oh, dire-direchohin ko na to. <laughs> no, no, this, is, this is, real talk lang, real talk lang, guys. Bakit ang dami nagagalit against yung mga God allows, yung mga hindi daw sovereign si God, hindi daw ganito. Bakit? Because they can't reconcile it. And they don't like seeing other people prosper. Kasi dapat kasi pangit ng buhay mo yung buhay. Kasi ituturo ng, ng pastor natin. So they're projecting now that inner unforgiveness to other people. And that's why the message, the truth that you guys are sharing to others, that's why it's rejected. It's not because you're offensive. You know, unless talagang flesh niyo yun, nakakaasar kang tao. Pero, you know, it's the message. And I'm just, I'm just pinpointing the root here. This is real talk, guys. Yung root of bitterness yan. Yung nakikita nila, bakit sa'yo gumagaling? Sa akin hindi. So, therefore, maasar na lang ako sa'yo. Parang yung Pharisees. Yan din naman sila kay Jesus eh. Lazarus was raised from the dead. That was an amazing miracle. A man who was dead for so long, di ba? For four days. 
uh, against all the superstition, may superstition pa na hanggang three days nun daw, ganito, ganyan, whatever. Wala. Nas, na-bypass yun. Eh, you know, na, na-supersede yun ang power ni Jesus Christ, ang grace niya. And when this guy came back to life, ano yung sabi ng Pharisees? Tara, patayin natin. You know what I mean? Ganong kabigat yung offense nila na pwede na silang mabulag sa isang uh, sa isang miracle na ganun na gravity. Di ba? So, what's my point? Guys, when people are offended at you, when they accuse you, when they call you demonic, when they call you um, whatever names and accuse you of being in a cult or whatever, you don't be offended. Guard your heart. Huwag kayo ma-offend. Di ba? Ephesians 6.12, hindi natin kalaban tao. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the spirits behind the person. So tayo, you know, people, those, 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 um, th- those believers who stand in the truth of God's word, who understand forgiveness, we don't hold unforgiveness towards others. Bakit? Eh, di rin naman natin deserve to. So why, why withhold it from anyone? Aside from the obvious fact that it opens doors for the enemy to come in, hindi yun eh, ito yung core ng gospel. Diba? Ito yung core ng gospel natin. So kung ito di natin makuha, di natin ma-process, how much more the rest of the gospel? Diba? So, so you know, anyway... Do, ano daw bro, when you speak truth in love, kailangan mo ba mag-apologize for it? No. I will not apologize for anything that Jesus said. I will not apologize for anything. I'm sorry if you have a hard heart that you're gonna take... You know what I mean? Kasi ganun na rin, offended ganun rin. Disasagarin ko na. Diba? I will try to plant whatever... <laughs> whatever whatever um, seeds there are hangat na hinikinig ka sa akin pero kasi again ito yun eh kaya, kaya ako nasasabi yan guys kaya ako nasasabi yan and I, I wish that everybody would also you know learn to evaluate and check ano ba yung heart mo bakit mo kinakausapin pa yun muna intention mo di ba kasi pwede natin ganyan yan yung mga iba feeling nila sila yung savior. Na hindi, re-rescue ko tong group ko kasi sila blinded by religion. Ako yung, you are not Jesus. You are not the Holy Spirit. Hindi ikaw yung taga-rescue nila. So just speak the truth in love. Maaring, you might even push them further away by doing that. You know what I mean? So, hindi siya pilitan yung, ano, yung planting yung seed. That's a, that's a different topic altogether. Pero, yung point ko lang, exercise wisdom tayo and check natin heart. Ano ba yung totoo. Di ba? Ano ba yung totoo na dahilan bakit natin gusto share itong truth? Is it just overflow of God's relationship with us? Is it the overflow of God's grace and love in our lives? Or gusto natin isaksak sa mukha nila nakita mo kami yung tama, ikaw mali. O kita mo, kami-kami yung tinatawag mong kulto o yan. Sige, ano yan? Baka, baka yun yung dahilan. So, you know, anyway, alam ko makapili sa tenga yung sinasabi ko, but uh, I'm not calling anyone out. I don't know the stories here or whatever. Pero that's between you and God. Can you honestly say, kayong dalawa lang ni God, ha? Walang, walang iba nakatingin, walang leader, walang pastor, walang, you know, it's just, just you and God. Can you really say, the Lord, grab me overflow ng love mo sa buhay ko. You know, and, and I guarantee you that, you know, if that is your motivation, effortless mag-share. Sobrang effortless. Effortless mag-minister, effortless. Merong persecution, pero may grace to overcome. You know, you know, not for anything, guys. If there's anyone in this group right here, right now, that's gotten a lot of stones thrown at him, it's me. You know, uh, puro na lang may life-size cut-out ako dun na bawal pumasok <laughs> so, sa mga ibang institution. You know, but I mean, man, I don't care. I, I'm, 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 I'm overflowing with God's love. You know, and it's, it's such a wonderful thing na hindi ka na na-offend. Kasi wala nang value sa yung human opinion. As far as you're concerned, as far as we're concerned, ang priority natin is what does God say about me? Di ba? So, yun lang, yun lang naman. That, that's, that's all I want to do. Add. What do you call it? Uh, I guess like you come to a point when you speak the truth in love that your motivation to speak it is love. Eh? Like not just to make a point, not to... Not to uh, think that you're right or, you know, who's wrong, who's right or what's the truth, what's this. The motivation is always love. And you know what? One of the, uh, actually the first person who spoke truth and love to me is is Ron. Like he spoke the truth and love to me and I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was, you know, I was about to get offended, I guess. Not, not really offended, but he woke me up just by speaking the truth and love because I knew who he was eh? 
Nakita ko si Ron before and then now. Yeah, I was like, he's speaking truth in me. He sharing truth to me. And I, I, I was first sad recipient of, you know, the truth and love. And it comes to a point that you're going to speak it because of your motivation is love. So we don't apologize for it. But because you love the person so much, you speak it. If they get offended, then you don't point out their mistake. You know, you, there's something in your heart. Let them figure it out. I guess, I guess that's, 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 that's easier said than done. Amen. Important and then yung wisdom and discernment. Na minsan kasi kahit na tama tayo, makastambol ng iba. You know, basta division na ganun, ay, ayaw naman ni God. Na, tama yung speak the truth and love. Pero we exercise wisdom and discernment as to how we apply diba, that, that, that speaking the truth and love. So, you know. All right, praise God, brothers. Uh, there's Zach right there. So, does anybody have any questions before we take a photo and end tonight's session? My questions, but I think Lynn has uh, some sharing here. So, uh, does anybody else have questions? Especially about unforgiveness? Do you guys, you know, deal with deal with people with unforgiveness, like especially in the family? The like, how do you deal with that? So, I don't know if you guys are interested to know the answer, but any questions? That that was just my question. So no more questions. Okay. All right, Zach's Zach's already there, so. Photo. Photo. Okay, I'll wait for your videos. Okay, waiting. 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 Okay. Okay. One. Wait, no, last residential. Okay, there. Okay, one, two, three. One more. I think I have everyone for good measure. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Got it. Good to see you Thank guys. You. Thank 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 you.